In this video, I will show you my neural network built with geometry nodes and a simulation zone. In the upper window, you see a visual representation of a network. We have four inputs, two neurons in the hidden layer and two outputs. The values in red are the input values. At the hidden layer, the red values are the result of a net input and the activation function. At the output, the red values are the output values. Of course, the outputs are also the result of a net input and the activation function. The values in blue represent the correct output depending on the inputs. If the first and the third input is 1, the upper output should be 1. For now, I set the correct output of the lower output always to 0. When we move to the next frame, all inputs are 0, so all outputs are also 0. In the upper right, you see the training process of a network with 60,000 inputs. In every frame, the network adjusts the weights for the next calculation. I needed that much data to train the network properly. When I zoom out in the lower window, you will see the entire node graph and the huge simulation zone. The part after the simulation zone is for the visual representation of the weights. At the beginning of the simulation zone, you see the frame forward propagation. The forward propagation calculates the outputs of each neuron dependent on the inputs and the weights. I call the upper neuron in the hidden layer the A node and the lower neuron the B node. For the A node, the net input is the value of the first input multiplied with the according weight plus the value of the second input multiplied with the weight and so on. In the example, the second and the fourth input are zero, so we only need to add two values. After this, we need to apply the activation function to this value. I chose the logistic function, one divided by one plus e to the power of minus x. For negative values, the function is nearly zero, and for positive values, the function returns to one. The interesting part is around the zero. Here we have the strongest inclination. So we must apply the logistic function to 0.67 and we get 0.6682. We need to do this calculation for all nodes in each frame except the input layer. And we must calculate all values of a previous layer before we can continue with the next layer. The calculation is done by this node group. Every input value is multiplied with a weight and everything is added. And the logistic function is applied to the sum. I connected the sum into a separate group output because we need this value later for adjustment for the weights. The same applies to the output neurons. In this case, it is not that complicated since we have only two connections for each neuron. The node group of a logistic function looks like this. I transformed the function to e to the power of x divided by 1 plus e to the power of x. The next step is to adjust the weights for the next forward propagation. The adjustment of the weight between a neuron j to a neuron i is the negative learning rate epsilon multiplied with delta i multiplied with aj. AJ is simply the output of a neuron J from our forward propagation. The learning rate epsilon should be small, 0.1 or 0.01. Smaller learning rates lead to better result, but it takes longer. In my case, I set it to 1 because it took too long. When we calculate delta I, we must distinguish between an output neuron or a neuron in the hidden layer. In the case of an output neuron, we calculate the output value and subtract the correct output. The correct output subtracted from the output value is the error of the output. We multiply this value with the derivation of our activation function of the net input. Now you know why I put the net input of every neuron as a separate output in the forward propagation. We need this value as an argument for the derivation. In case neuron i is located in the hidden layer, the calculation is more complex. We need again the derivation of a net input multiplied with the sum of delta l 
multiplied with the weight from the neuron I to neuron L. This means from our neuron I in the hidden layer, we need all connections to neurons in the following layer and the delta values. The derivation of the logistic function is f multiplied with 1 minus f. As an example, we calculate the adjustment of a weight from the neuron A to output 1. We multiply the derivation of a net input with the error multiplied with the output of neuron A. This results in change of a weight of 0.0432 multiplied with the learning rate. The adjustments of the weight of the connections to the output is happening in these node groups. The correct output values are calculated in this node group. When we tap in the node group, we see the calculation of the derivation of the activation function. The logistic function multiplied with 1 minus the logistic function. We calculate the error and multiply the result with the output of neuron A, the derivation and the learning rate 1. We subtract the result from the old weight. I made an input in the simulation zone for each weight. These are the initial weights. After the first iteration, the adjusted weights are used for the next forward propagation. The next example is the adjustment of a weight from the input x00 to neuron A. We multiply the learning rate with the output of x00 and the derivation of the net input of neuron A. For the sum, we need the derivation of the net input of output 1 multiplied with the error of output 1 and the weight of a connection from A to output 1 plus the derivation of the net input of output 2 multiplied with the error of output 2 and the weight of a connection from neuron A to output 2. This results in a weight change of 0.0161 times epsilon. In the node graph I started with a sum and calculated the derivation of the net inputs and the error and multiply with the weight. And in the node group we calculate the derivative of a neuron A and multiply the sum with the input value. Again, we subtract the weight change from the old weight. That's all for the neural network. I put the visual representation of the weights in the node groups at the end. I transformed the float value into a string and made a curve out of it. I filled the spaces and set the position with the group input. At the end, I set a material and join all geometry at the end of a graph. The original plan of a neural network was to detect vertical and horizontal lines in an image of 2 times 2 pixels. I sampled the gray value in each pixel as the input of the network. A vertical line should result in a 1 at output 1 and a horizontal line should result in a 1 at output 2. This was too much effort for the training. In the training process in the upper right, you see the training for the vertical line in the left half of the image. I needed 60,000 frames for a mediocre result. What can we do now? We can calculate the weights in the first evolution of 60,000 frames and use the resulting weights as initial weights for the next process. That was a short journey of the world of AI. I hope you liked it and I see you in the next video.